Hello, this is Dr. Gandhi. Welcome to my video on creating error bars using SPSS. Oftentimes in counseling research, when working with variables, we want to be able to view the confidence interval for a particular variable in the form of a graph. And that's what error bars can do for us. So if we take a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data view, I have an ID, independent variable program with three levels, individual, counseling, group counseling, and treatment as usual, and three dependent variables, severity, functioning, and motivation. And we'll presume these scores are all reported in the form of T-scores. And a T-score is a standardized score with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. So one way to generate error bars is to go through graphs, chart builder, this is what the chart builder looks like by default. And the simple error bar is going to be in the default section from the choose from here, which is bar. So it's in the same grouping as a simple bar. So I'm going to drag simple error bar into the chart preview. And then for the x axis, I'm going to use the independent variable which is program. And then I'm going to load all three of the dependent variables into the y-axis labeled mean here. Uh, this create summary group dialog will come up. Just click OK. And this is ready to run. So we'll click OK here. And we can see we have the error bars for the 95% confidence interval. So these are fairly small relative to the rest of this graph. Like all the error bars are toward the top here. Not particularly easy to see. If you double click this, there is a button here, an icon, scale to data. And it might be helpful to also make the entire graph a little larger which we can do in this view by double clicking and you can see chart size and I'm going to change the height instead of 375 I'm going to make this 450 I'm going to maintain the aspect ratio and apply so that makes it larger but the error bars themselves are still a little difficult to see along with the means so I can change the size, the, the weighting for these. So let's change the weight to 3 from 1 down here. Click Apply. And then we want to select the dot representing the mean. So I want to click off of the error bar and then just click onto the actual dot representing the mean. You can see that have a size of 5, border width of 1. You can also change the type here. I'm going to change the size to 10. Makes it a little more noticeable there. And I'll close this. And you can see now on the output view, uh, this is much easier to see. The bottom value of the y-axis is now 40 and the top is now 60. So we have the means represented here by the dot in the middle of the error bars. And then if you look at the uh, top and bottom of the error bar itself, that represents the 95% confidence interval. Now to interpret what these error bars mean, let's take a look for example at the individual level of the independent variable and at the variable severity. So when looking at the confidence intervals, what we're interested in is what is the true mean for the population that we sampled on this particular measure, in this case our measurement of severity. And we know that there's a 95 percent probability that the true mean will be within the 95% confidence interval, which is represented as having a high value here at the top 
portion of the error bar and the low value at the bottom. So we can see that the 95% confidence interval for severity at the individual level of the independent variable program is a more narrow range than for functioning or for motivation. Now in SPSS, the error bars can calculate more than just the 95% confidence interval. For example, if I go back to graphs, chart builder, I'm just going to reset this completely and drag in the simple error bar. And again, I'm going to move over program and all three dependent variables, just as I did before. But this time, I'm going to move over here to edit properties of, and I'm going to move back to point one. And you see, of course, by default, it says display error bars, and error bars represent the 95% confidence interval. But what if I want to see the standard deviation? In this case, plus or minus two standard deviations if I left it with the default value that comes in that text box. I'll click Apply. I'll click OK. And I'll just resize this. Double click here. And first I'm going to rescale or scale to data. This is the rescale chart where you can select an area to rescale it. But here I'm just going to scale to data. And then a chart size, change this to 450. So you can see the error bars now represent plus or minus two standard deviations. And recognizing that these are t-scores, we know that the mean should be 50 and the standard deviation should be 10. And we can see the mean values are fairly close to 50 here for these different variables across these different levels of the independent variable program. And we would expect plus or minus two standard deviations to be roughly 30 to 70. And that is the case for many of these variables. Uh, you can see for severity on the individual level of the independent variable program, the negative two standard deviations is above 40. It's 41. So that variable, the values of that variable on that level the independent variable stand out a bit compared to the rest of these error bars. Now the chart builder isn't the only way to build error bars. You can also go in through graphs and go to legacy dialogues and you can see here error bar. And in this case I'm going to show you simple error bar and summaries of separate variables. So data in chart are summaries of separate variables. So this will be a bit different than what I did before. So I'll reset this and I'm just going to move severity, functioning motivation over to error bars. You see confidence interval for mean is set by default, but you can also set the standard error, the error of the mean and the standard deviation just as you can from the chart builder. And you'll notice when I run this chart, the independent variable program is not included. These are the error bars for severity, functioning, and motivation for the variable uh, not broken down by the levels of the independent variable. So you can see by viewing the error bars for severity, functioning, and motivation that it's probabilistic that the true mean is the highest for severity, and then next highest would be motivation, and then the lowest would be for functioning. If you wanted to modify this graph, you could do so in the same way as you would if it was created through Chart Builders by double-clicking, and you'll see the Chart Editor opens up. I hope you found this video on creating 
error bars in SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.